All right, so this one here, Bitfinex. So we had done a video a couple days ago uh, about the Tether incident. And I had talked to, to, to you about everything that, that's going on. Tether is number three market cap. Let's just take a look here. Where are we? So Tether, Tether. Uh, here's the market cap of 24 billion, 82 in the 24-hour uh, volume. Uh, that's what be, but that, that is what is being used for a lot of different trading pairs, so sure, right? So let's just say, for example, and I, I talked about this, let's just say that they, they come out and go, you know what, we fooled all of you, and uh, it's not backed one-to-one -one a dollar. We don't have $24 billion laying around, so sorry. Uh, $24 billion goes away. But out of the market cap of $1 trillion, whatever. Uh, right now, we're at $1.85 billion, so uh, or $1 trillion, $85 billion. So if we lose $24 billion, who cares? I mean, it would be a shock to the system. Uh, Bitcoin would go down, which is great for me and you because we dollar cost average and I'd be like, thank you, tip of the hat, appreciate it. And you just pick some cheap Bitcoin up. It's a flash sale. And then after that, people go, well, I'm going to go to stable coins that are actually around USDC or whatever else. I just use USD, USDC. And it looks pretty good. I wish, you know what, there was one, one complaint I wish uh, we could uh, address. And that is that the stable coins are built, they are an ERC-20 token. So USDC and USDT, they are on the Ethereum network and the fees are crazy outrageous. So uh, hopefully, you know, I think like, like Leo token or whatever else that's out there for a stable coin, RSV, RSR, which are the one, um, that stable coin a little bit different. So uh, maybe not on the, on the Ethereum network right now, that'd be great. So anyhow, this was a piece taken from what Bitcoin did. And if you haven't listened to this guy, McCormick, uh, he's a funny guy. So he was on with uh, Richard Hart. <laughs> Richard Hart had him on. They were talking about Hex. And for like 10 minutes straight, all McCormick said was, you're a scammer. I don't want to talk to you. You're just a scamming piece of junk. And this is it. And Richard's like, it was kind of funny because Richard's like, I'm not a scammer. I don't know what's going on. And it, whether you like Richard Hart or, 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 or you don't or uh, uh, like uh, McCormick, it's just, it's just a funny video. I, I need to link that at the very end, it's hilarious. And then at like 12 minutes, it's like, all right, well, I'm a scammer and that's it, it's just funny. So he had these two guys on, uh, Biolo uh, Arduino and Stuart Hogner, I think I nailed that. And uh, one is the uh, chief technical officer and the other one's general counsel. And they just pretty much talk about what's going on with this lawsuit. And it's, it's kind of important, but I think people are putting like way too much preference on what's what the outcome of this this whole thing is. It's not like, you know, we're going to find out that that there's some kind of virus uh, that just you know wipes out all cryptocurrency because it seems like that's what everybody's talking about. I mean, I get it is one of those things, but in, in the long run, we'll be just fine. We'll be just fine if this collapses. People will just do something else. So anyhow, uh, Bitfinex General Counsel Stuart Hogner, that's the guy. In an interview with Peter McCormick, Fifth National Council claims the misconception that USDT is not fully backed uh, from a sworn affidavit, which he says has been taken out of context. Isn't it always, always out of context? According to affidavit, about 74% of Tether backing was in the form of cash and cash equivalents on hand. The remaining 26% was in the form of a $550 million loan to the company, which it is fully servicing. Great, so you got some loans to cover everything else and it's backed one to one of the dollar. Sounds good to me. Since the stablecoin's total market cap has gone up from 2.1 billion to the current 22 billion, the loan share of the USDT reserves shrunk to 2.5%. Hmm. So, both Hogner and Arduino have confirmed that Bitcoins are part of the reserves assets that Bitfinex uses to back the stablecoin. So, essentially what they're saying is that, yes, it is a stablecoin. Yes, we have it back to the dollar. We don't really have dollars, dollars, but we do have Bitcoin. And as long as that goes up, we should be okay if I'm reading this correctly. Again, not a lawyer, but this is what it sounds like to me. Arduino does reveal the only time Bitfinex acquired the Bitcoins, which now form part of Tether's reserves, he states, the Bitcoins in reserves are a good amount remaining from the past acquisition that we likely did in 2015, 2016. Okay, uh, the Bitcoins, which we bought for a good price in 2015, 16, will probably be enough for perpetuity. So essentially what he's saying is like, look, we got a bunch of Bitcoin back in the day and it was super cheap. And uh, now we got a bunch of them. So if we have to sell them off to, you know, uh, to, to back these, uh, uh, these loans or to, to say it as a stable coin, we'll do it. But I bet for them, they're like, we don't want to do that. Because if they think about it this way, if they have Bitcoin right now 
and they have to sell it just because you know the, there's a stipulation that you have to have dollars. Well, that would suck for them because especially right now, right now Bitcoin's roughly about forty thousand. What if it goes all the way up to like four hundred thousand, or let's just say my my reserve wet blanket uh, type of uh, assessment, which means it's I thought it's gonna be like one hundred fifty k. That would be awful because right there they are eliminating uh, a 4x gain and just because they have to you know uh, go to the uh, stipulation of these um, uh, of this lawsuit so i think that would be pretty awful for them in general hopefully they don't have to do it however this is where it gets good the lack of an independent audit i hear this all the time well if they have it why don't they just do an independent audit and then everything can be done kind of like what celsius did celsius had somebody come in independent uh, people, I think it was uh, not Coinmetrics. It was uh, one of those um, Masari or one of those places that actually do all the different uh, algorithms. That this is good. Why do they just do that? Well, when asked why the company is not hiring outside auditors to conduct a full audit, an evasive. I like how they said it. An evasive, an evasive Hogner. Just he did, they, they couldn't just say oh, he said this. An evasive Hogner says some steps have been taken in this direction as a show of good faith. Steps include consulting reports produced by one accounting firm and a law firm as well as a report from Bitfinex bankers. Bitfinex is continuously looking for ways to share information with the community to be more and open to be transparent. I like that answer. Uh, very uh, PC. Hogner then closes by clarifying that the AG, the Attorney General, has not filed a lawsuit against Bitfinex and Tether, and that the action against the two entities does not amount to be a criminal investigation. So really, that is really what it comes down to. And there's really nothing much more to say about this one. Honestly, I, honestly, I, I have to tell you, I got to tell you, I got to tell you, uh, I don't really care which way it goes. Uh, if, if it does come out and they're like, oh, we didn't have anything, great, Bitcoin goes down and I get a flash sale. And everybody here on this channel who dollar cost average, you are probably all doing the exact same thing. And we're like, great, we can pick up some more Bitcoin. If it doesn't, then uh, everything gets smoothed over and no one has to worry about that nonsense. And then, of course, the price either you know stabilizes or it goes up a little bit more. It's a win-win situation. And these are the things about, about investing for the long term. If you just kind of take some, some sound principles, and again, not a, not a financial advisor, but just some sound principles and go, okay, I'm just going to do a little bit here. I'm not going to, you know, put my, I'm not going to sell my kidneys and my kids and everything else uh, to, to put into Bitcoin today. Uh, it usually works itself out. So that, so that's, that is uh, the, the big thing. Look, uh, that is it for today, but I'm going to put out a second video uh, because I need to talk to everybody about, well, there, there's a couple of things. First, I need to talk to you about, it's not how much you make, it is how much you keep. And you know, on this channel, we're big on scams. We hate them. Uh, I did an interview uh, with Marky and Marky is one of the community members over at Trade the Chain and she had an issue come up where she got swindled out of uh, $10,000 worth of a cryptocurrency from the Atomic Wallet and I have it, it's just good to put a, uh, a face to all these scams that are out there. She's going to tell you exactly what she did, how it happened and what not to do and I'm going to give you some little tips here but you have to understand um, for scams and everything else don't be all high and mighty and be like how can you do that? I get emails on a, at least a weekly basis where people say, Rob, watch your channel. I did the exact same thing you said not to do. And I always thought I was too smart to be swindled out of my crypto. And it happens a lot. The same thing. I, there is a doctor, I think it was from Ohio, a doctor from Ohio. He lost over, it was over $50,000. And he said, man, he goes, I just, I, I knew not to do it. He goes, but I just, and I heard you say things in the back of my, my brain, but I still did it. So I need to hammer this into your head, uh, everybody who's watching, just to make sure that you keep everything. So it's not how much you make, it is how much you keep. That is a big thing. And the second thing uh, I want to address is about videos and sponsorships, uh, because I've been talking a whole heck of a lot about Voyager. So the real question is, am I being sponsored by Voyager? So I'll answer all that later. All right, so thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate it. And uh, if you like these types of videos, there'll be two more that's gonna pop up on your left and right. Not sure what YouTube do their magic. And that is all. So thanks so much, I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one later today.